Every clinical trial is a unique and very important piece of research that requires the utmost attention of all parties involved. It exposes patients to an uncertain treatment or healthy volunteers to a risk without personal benefit. It also costs a lot of time and money and is under high pressure to produce results that can be relied upon when making treatment recommendations to patients. To maximize the chance for success, a clinical trial needs to be optimally designed, planned and managed. Much expertise in areas of research, ethics, regulations and business needs to be available to ensure success. For planning and management of the trial, it is important to include a high level of management expertise and to use management tools that are adapted to the needs of a clinical trial. Clinical trial project management. This presentation summarizes the key elements of clinical trial project management, not with the intention to educate you to become a clinical trial project manager, but to help you understand what is relevant in the organization of a clinical trial and thus to better judge whether a sponsor is enabling the right infrastructure, study team and resources. The basis of clinical trial project management is general project management techniques. In this presentation, the basic principles of clinical trial project management will be described. The organization of a clinical trial is particularly difficult because very important parts of the project are not under the direct control of the sponsor. For the investigators, the clinical trial is only a small part of their overall responsibilities. However, they still need to ensure that patients join the study and undergo all study activities. But patients have their own activities, needs and interests as well. And there are quite a number of other important aspects where the sponsor has only indirect control. This creates a lot of possible risk for failure. It is therefore very important that experienced clinical trial project management resources are available in a clinical trial. This is to ensure that the trial is performed within the given time frame and ultimately as quickly as possible in the interests of the patient. Reliable quality of trial performance needs to be achieved in order to ensure it generates reliable data. In addition, the trial needs to be organized within the available budget to avoid the trial being stopped early due to a lack of funding. Ultimately, the trial needs to fulfill all laws, regulations and guidelines to ensure that the data can be published and used for the marketing authorization of the new medicine. This chart describes the flow of activities occurring in a clinical trial, from study approval to record retention after the closure of the trial. Before the request for a clinical trial authorization, CTA, is submitted, all the internal trial design, planning and preparatory activities have to be completed by the sponsor in collaboration with the investigators. This is meant to illustrate the many major steps involved in planning, executing and completing a clinical study. Extensive planning and preparation of all steps of a clinical trial are vital for its success. The practical consequences of each decision need to be considered to avoid surprises. Thus, every hour invested in planning helps to reduce the risk of later crisis. In the end, crisis management is much more difficult and expensive than avoiding a crisis. This list gives an impression of the different processes and collaboration elements that have been thought about and enabled when organizing a clinical trial. A lot of them are interlinked and therefore need to be thought about carefully. There is an increased awareness of the importance of involving patients in the planning and preparation of a clinical trial. Patients can contribute with their real-life experiences of the disease in the design of the trial and trial material, for example, informed consent forms and patient diaries, in such a way that the trial is better suited to the patient needs. This will also contribute to increased trust, better recruitment and retention of the patients in the trial. However, Clinical researchers often sacrifice optimal patient-centeredness for the constraints of the trial limitations. A stronger voice of the patient in preparing trials of true relevance for patients and finding the right compromises between the constraints on, on time, on budget, top quality execution will need to be established if we want to enable more successful clinical trials. There are estimates that currently up to 50% of trials started do not finish or produce data that cannot be interpreted. This is an enormous waste of efforts, resources for both patients and personnel, 
money and goodwill. It also represents lost opportunities in our struggle to find better treatments for patients. A stronger involvement of patients into the planning and preparation process of clinical trials could improve the percentage of successful trials. Clinical project management plays a vital role in planning and preparing for a clinical trial. However, it is equally important in the ongoing supervision of how the trial is carried out until its completion. The resources and study progress need ongoing management. Mistakes and deviations from the plan need to be detected early and corrective measures need to be taken. Classic project management techniques help to handle this process more reliably. Clinical project management consists of many elements that need to be integrated by the project manager. Project scope management is the most important at the start. It is essential to have a good definition of what exactly the project is in order to prepare the plan and start considering the requirements of the project. Once the trial is defined, plans can be made on the following. Where to perform the trial, required resources, both internal, human resource management, and external, procurement management, timelines, and budget. Equally important is that the areas of risk in the trial are identified early on and that there is an alternative plan worked out for all critical steps in the plan, also known as project risk management. Project integration management deals with bringing all aspects of a project together to understand how they are interrelated and how changes in one parameter have consequences on others. Project procurement management deals with all aspects of buying services and products this also includes outsourcing. The clinical trial project manager has a very complex task as they have to interact with many different departments and ensure that they deliver according to the agreed plans. Depending on who they are interacting with, they may have more or less power of control. In addition to the team of people and departments involved in planning, preparing for and carrying out the trial, the project manager has to liaise with a number of support disciplines. These disciplines help them set up certain parts of the trial or source information for their own needs. Many pharmaceutical companies have, for example, a purchasing department that helps the project manager identify suitable service providers, negotiate costs with them, and help with the contract preparation and negotiation. The sales and marketing department might help to identify suitable investigators. However, they will also want to know about the progress of the trial to be able to communicate this to their physicians. The human resource department will help the project manager to find and hire the staff they need in the different countries, if suitable resources are not currently available. The IT department can help the project manager to identify and negotiate the optimal technology for the electronic capture of the collected data, for the optimal study planning and management system, or for the electronic patient reported data like electronic diaries. A communication plan is also very helpful for motivating the team for managing expectations and documentation of what has been achieved. So who are the stakeholders in the clinical trial? They are all those who are in any way involved in the trial or have a certain type of interest. This list can be quite long. Thorough calculation of the costs of the clinical trial is very important. The follow-up and forecasting of remaining costs as well as cash flow management are very important tasks for the project manager an essential element of clinical project management. The costs of a clinical trial are comprised of different cost factors. These costs are partly as a result of in-house activities, but in many cases, the externally created costs present the large cost portion. The budget of a clinical trial is impacted by a number of factors that can be varied to reduce the costs if needed. The investigator budget can be impacted for example, by the number of patients expected to be recruited, but also by the number of activities to be performed per patient. For example, should an electrocardiogram ECG reading of the heart be taken two or four times per patient? Do we need all lab parameters measured every time? Does the patient really have to come every four weeks during the 12-month observation period? 
The hourly rates of staff vary from country to country. Can the trial be performed in the lower salary country? Opening and maintaining of investigation sites is expensive. Could the study be done in fewer sites with better recruitment? How much monitoring of the sites is really necessary, or could we reduce the number of monitoring visits by including electronic CRF that allows checking the entered data from the monitor's desks? The decision on these variable options has to be made based on the risk to the patient's safety and to the quality of the data. In addition, you need to consider the available resources and the time frame. But not all factors can be influenced. Trials in some areas of indication are more expensive than others. Often this is because they require more expensive technology and or treatments than in other areas of indications. Typically, cancer or stem cell trials are more expensive than trials in frequently incurring infectious diseases or depression, where most tests consist of questionnaires. When starting the planning process of a trial, only a very rough estimate of the cost is possible as many factors are not defined. But with increased knowledge about the planned study, the project manager can refine the accuracy of the costing. Typically costs increase slowly at the beginning of a trial and continually rise until the trial is in full swing. Towards the end of the trial, the cost drops sharply because the investigator payments and the fees for most of the service providers have been paid while the trial is in the statistical evaluation and reporting phase. Changes to the originally agreed plans are likely to happen, even in the best prepared trials, but it's important to envisage the required changes early on. The later the changes occur, the more expensive they will be and the less that can be done about them. Supervision of the trial while it is carried out is another central aspect of clinical project management. At different stages of the trial, the elements to be supervised change. At the beginning, the focus must be on getting trial approval as rapidly and smoothly as possible in all countries, getting the study medicine to the sites, providing all necessary information, training, equipment, and documentation to the sites, preparing to start the trial, also called site initiation. During study performance, the focus is then on Recruitment rate, this is how many participants have been recruited, monitoring activities, CRF completion, study medicine supply, and the occurrence of serious adverse events and the monitoring and reporting of these by the project manager. Another key date everybody asks the project manager for is the database log. This is the moment when all patients have completed the trial. All data have been entered into the database and are clean so that the statistics compartment can start to evaluate the data. The date of provision of high level results is the time point senior management and the shareholders look if the treatment has actually worked. They are also interested if statistically significant differences were found between the treatments. The project manager's task only ends once the last trial activities have been performed, such as all trial sites have been closed and the documents archived. The trial is evaluated and reported in a final report as well as in publicly accessible database and or publication. The trial master file is complete and archived at the sponsor site and all payments have been made and the budgeting process is completed. A project cannot be managed without proactive risk management. This is especially the case if there are many possible different types of risk. Therefore, risk management is one of the most important elements of clinical trial management. As earlier mentioned, there are many risks to clinical trials. In addition to the reasons listed on the slide, there can be natural disasters like earthquakes or fires, even bomb attacks and war. Risk can only partly be avoided through proper planning and management, but in many cases, it is only possible to handle the situation when it occurs. However, in such a case, it is an invaluable advantage if the situation has been foreseen as a possible risk and the project manager has a prepared a plan for solving the situation. When identifying risks, it is helpful to determine which ones have the highest chance of happening along with the highest impact. In this example, if enrollment is slower than expected, which is common in most trials, this has the highest impact for not finishing on time which will also result in overspending and resourcing problems. It has an enormous impact on the trial. 
Inexperienced project managers under time pressure consider proactive risk identification and mitigation planning as an unnecessary burden and a waste of their time in the hectic trial planning and preparation phase. On the other hand, experienced project managers accept this additional burden because they know that good risk management helps them in the following ways. To improve the team's collaboration in their project, to increase the trust in their management skills, to save them many hours of disaster management during the trial, and to avoid individual team members doing their own risk handling. Most importantly, it gives them a much higher chance of delivering a successful project.